directly into our next talk, which is on Bitcoin Monero atomic swaps. I know this is a very hot level of research going on recently. There's a ton of interest. So uh, ZKAO, okay, you got the screen share going here. Hi, hi, can you hear me? We can hear you, yes. I'm going to, since, since everything is seems to be working on our end, I'm just gonna hop off and just let you take it from here. How about that? Oh yeah, so basically I would like to do it more interactively. So feel very welcome to ask questions or ask questions that people drop on the chat. Uh, so basically, uh, like in 2017, we were in CCC and uh, we were discussing and we found it would be very interesting to create a project to swap uh, Bitcoin for Monero uh, in a trustless manner, atomically. And uh, and after we, uh, I, it was just for the, because it, so, it sounded very, very interesting. And my colleague uh, hashed, uh, couldn't uh, get his head out of that. And uh, we ended up uh, working on this project much more than we initially expected. So, uh, uh, so, uh, uh, one of the things uh, that uh, cryptocurrencies bring uh, is like uh, this permissionless way of exchanging money online, for example, on the internet. Uh, before, like all the uh, all the electronic money was uh, intermediated. Uh, ca can you actually see my screen? Okay. Okay. And uh, yes, I, I can see your screen. Yes. All right, and. Uh, and uh, so, uh, and uh, there is an issue with this because we have cash in society and cash is a bearer, peer-to-peer, -peer, permissionless and privacy preserving form of money. And uh, who has it can spend it, uh, has the right to, to spend it by having physical possession, peer-to-peer, -peer, you can just uh, meet someone and give it to this person directly. If it's peer-to-peer, -peer, it's also permissionless. No, nobody is on the way to intercept this transaction. And privacy preserving, you can be like locked in a room, make a money transfer, uh, uh, give money, give cash to someone, and nobody else needs to know about it. And cash is legal. Uh, so uh, we should not like downgrade uh, our uh, our online money like uh, by using a totally or accepting a totally transparent financial system like Bitcoin. We have to have ways to uh, be able to exercise uh, privacy by, for example, swapping Bitcoin into Monero and going into the some private world. But you should do that in a permissionless manner. Like you should not ask permission to go private. So uh, it looks like from, from this definition of, uh, of uh, cash, uh, Monero is cash and Bitcoin is almost. Bitcoin has this property of permissionless. So you, you could uh, spend your money in the wrong way and nobody could prevent you from doing that. However, because it's not privacy preserving, uh, people can watch you what you're doing with your money and they might go after you because of that. So this is very problematic in an open society. So, uh, we, and... Uh, so like the way we see atomic swaps is more like a, a cash to cash exchange. So you, you have euros and uh, you meet someone who has US dollar, you agree on ex an exchange rate and you exchange it in private. You don't, nobody else needs to get involved in this exchange. Uh, only the people in the exchange. And we think that uh, atomic swaps, they, they are very similar to this. So it's a cash to cash exchange. And uh, in the same way that, uh, like, you you wouldn't want to, if someone tries to buy your moto for uh, like two thousand dollars, you might take cash and not worry too much about it. But if you are trying to sell your house and somebody shows up with a million in cash, you are gonna worry about it because uh, you would want to know where it came from and uh, and uh, and if it's uh, if it's not counterfeit. So there is like this natural tendency of people to, to judge the quality of what they're getting in exchange. So like uh, in the crypto space, now people are responsible for keeping, taking 
care of their private keys. They, can, they could also be responsible for not engaging into uh, suspicious looking uh, transactions. Like if a transaction is too good to be true, it's probably not true. <laughs> so one thing that, that uh, Monero would gain, so B uh, Bitcoin users for sure would gain a lot of privacy by being able to, to switch to Monero in a trustless and permissionless manner. But what Monero gains from Bitcoin is its liquidity. It has like a hundred times a higher market cap and it's much more easily accessible. So it's Bitcoin is easy to get. And if you have a, a network that uh, you can get Monero exchange Monero atomically, then you could uh, go into Monero for that path. Uh, so it's very interesting to have permissionless entry into a uh, privacy currency. Uh, it's not nice to have to, to have to ask for permission to, to go private. So uh, with this, I'm going to go and uh, I'm going to try to go through the protocol uh, uh, in the form of a, of a, a diagram. And uh, uh, so here first, I'm going to show this is the, the paper that includes it's the complete paper after the research. Uh, so. This research started like literally like three years ago, and uh, and uh, Hash really did a good job, and uh, and you can find the summary here. And uh, so I will. I think I'm, uh, the easiest way to understand the, the atomic swap is to play for the protocol. And uh, we have a representation of the protocol in a, as a patronet. Can you guys tell me if you can see? Yeah. If I zoom out, can you still see like this? I'm yes, yeah, so we're largely able to see. Um, I'm getting a good quality coming in from you, so you sh the people watching the stream should still be able to read the text. Okay, that's great. Okay, so I'm gonna just show like this. So here uh, we have a, a, like a, the basically a, a, a protocol representation. So here you have Bob who starts. With, Bitcoin in his private wallet, and Alice that starts with Monero on her private wallet. And uh, what uh, if the protocol goes through, like Alice should end up with Bitcoin and Bob should end up with Monero on their private wallets. And uh, I'm going to play the protocol and slowly I'm going to explain more and more what each transaction uh, does uh, and uh, how they're looking like. So basically, all the logic will happen on the Bitcoin side because Monero doesn't uh, just fix keys. So, uh, uh, so uh, how we do it is like you do a whole game theory on the Bitcoin side. So, like Bob is gonna Bob with Bitcoin is gonna need the protocol by creating uh, two transactions: a swap lock transaction that's gonna be the transaction that locks the Monero, uh, the the Bitcoin that is gonna be sent to Alice. So it's the the locked Bitcoin is gonna end up on this uh, with this script on this output. Uh, so and uh, and uh, and a transaction that uh, uh, is a refund transaction uh, and Bob already partially signs it and sends it to Alice. And uh, this uh, refund transaction is gonna span the swap lock output and give the money back to Bob basically. So this is a, a refund path. So Alice uh, checks the information that Bob gives and Alice uh, signs the refund transaction which, uh, because all the information is correct. And uh, having the, the refund, Bob can uh, safely lock the money on this swap lock contract and uh, publish it to the blockchain, uh, wait for it to be mined. And uh, the money is going to be on this very special uh, output here. Uh, nothing happened on the Monero chain yet. Uh, Alice has to uh, has to uh, to lock her money as well. And Alice is going to feel con uh, convinced she should do it because she can see that the lock the lock Bitcoin is locked in the correct address. So uh, basically. Uh, 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 Alice, uh, so Alice locks her, her Monero in this special address. This address is derived by both Alice and Bob. 
actually. So uh, no, none of them control this address. Only uh, they, they only know half of the private keys. So what is interesting now is that whoever learns the other half of the private key uh, gets the, the Bitcoin, uh, gets the Monero, sorry. And uh, it's either going to be a refund or a complete swap. So at this point, uh, Alice can't do anything. Bob has to reveal a, a special secret. This is a, just a synchronization secret. It's like a, the authorization of Bob to to let Alice move on on the pro on the protocol. Uh, so Bob shares the secret. This secret is needed to unlock this output. So this output needs this secret, synchronization secret. It needs uh, Alice. Uh, this Alice half key is the is the uh, private span key that uh, is locking this output here. So Bob has half of it. Alice has the other half. So basically, in order to Alice to to uh, to spend this output, she's gonna have to reveal this key. How does she do? How does she reveal this key? Is through this. Uh, uh, so basically, we use this uh, ECDSA uh, in, uh, adapter signature, which is basically like Alice's. Uh, Bob gives uh, Alice an encrypted transaction that in order for her to do uh, an encrypted signature and in order for her to decrypt the signature and use it here, she has to, uh, re uh, she, she's gonna, when she decrypts it, she leaks uh, this, this key basically. Uh, because if you have the decrypted, if Bob has the decrypted and the encrypted version of the signature, he can recover easily this key. So basically uh, you force Alice to reveal this key and Alice gets the Bitcoin in her private wallet. Now, this key that got leaked can be used by Bob to claim his Monero on the other side. So that's how a, the protocol uh, would run uh, in the successful case. But of course, there are tons of cases that are not the successful case. And uh, uh, for example, I went back in time a little bit uh for example here like uh basically bob decides that he doesn't give the, the secret uh, to authorize alice to continue running the protocol so he doesn't trigger this what can alice do the only thing she can do is like after a timeout uh this is a uh she 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 can uh, publish the refund transaction okay now let's try now we're going to understand a little bit the refund transaction so she uh, Alice published this refund transaction uh, because Bob wasn't responsive. Uh, he wasn't triggering this one. And so, like, right now, if Bob does not become responsive, uh, Alice is going to be able to take this path and take the Bitcoin. Uh, but if Bob can, he should become responsive, otherwise he's going to lose his money. And uh, he's going to uh, try to consume this output. And again, uh, this is like uh, the same scheme as before with adapter signature and the, this key is gonna get leaked by Bob uh, uh, decrypting uh, Alice, uh, Alice signature that is needed on this transaction. And uh, it's interesting now that because Bob leaked uh, his Monero key, uh, Alice can, can claim her uh, her refund on the Monero chain, like this. So this is uh, this is very interesting because uh, like we managed to like although we don't have any time lock or any scripting capability here, we managed to gain liveness by force forcing uh, Bob to act. So we force Bob to leak this key, and and uh, so basically uh, it's. Uh, uh, we, we, we managed to make this protocol live just on the Bitcoin with uh, Bitcoin game theory on the Bitcoin side. And uh, yeah, so uh, many things can happen here, like uh, even things that should never happen. For example, uh, let's go back in time. 
should never happen, not it should happen on the protocol, but in practice it will not, not happen because of game theory. So let's see, for example, if you the for example, if you would allow Alice not not to lock her my her Monero, if Alice just just refuses to oops, let's go here. So Bitcoin is locked and uh, there is no, and Alice doesn't lock her Monero. Then like Bob goes, okay, I'm gonna claim the refund after time lock. And, uh, and now what if, uh, so there's this path, for example, here that Alice can spend the refund. So if this would happen, Alice would uh, end up with both Bitcoin and Monero. And that's totally not an atomic swap. So, but this path is very important uh, for the game theory that we explained before. It's to force uh, to force Bob to react. So, in practice, this path will never happen uh, because uh, Bob can directly move the Bitcoin from this output into his private wallet by publishing this transaction and this transaction together. And this transaction he could pay tons of fees to make it pay for the the child, parent pays for the child. Yeah, so, uh, so it, uh, we are pretty convinced that, uh, that so like by, uh, by basically embedding like the, the, the Monero uh, private spend keys uh, uh, as the encryption keys for like some, uh, Bitcoin signatures is a is a very very uh, interesting way to 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 basically leak keys that can be used on the other chain and with the with the trick that uh, Sarang uh, presented before I explained before in previous talk uh, you can like because Monero and Bitcoin use different curves so you can prove that that key is actually the same on both sides so. Uh, we're pretty convinced that uh, the protocol is complete. Yeah, so if you guys have any like questions specific to the protocol, I think it would be very interesting, especially now that they, we can try to play it. Sure, thank, thank you so much. Um, first, I just want to point out that uh, you know, I'm paying attention to the YouTube, I'm paying attention to Discord. Uh, Sering Nother is still on, so if he does have any questions, of course, Sering, hop on in. Um, I guess first, First question, um, how, so, so you've architected the general process for how it works. What is the next step to, to implement this into uh, you know, a functional system? What, what does that look like? Oh, uh, so like uh, we have to uh, first uh, start uh, organizing ourselves to see how, how big of a project this can be in terms of uh, how many people should work on it. Like uh, we are currently like three people and maybe we want to work with more people if uh, on this project, if uh, it happens. Like basically we're still like in the phase of uh, trying to uh, write uh, some timeline of a project, like some deliverables that we know are necessary. Uh, uh, let's say prerequisites for for achieving the final goal, and uh, yeah, so but if, so basically, I think in the next uh, months or so, I think we're gonna basically present this to the community and uh, and uh, and make a CCS proposal, and uh, and depending on how it goes, then we we decide uh, how uh, how much uh, we, I will see how much effort we can put into it. So, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of things to be done. Like understood. On <laughs> <laughs> the on the GitHub page that you that you shared, I, I and I also sent this uh, on YouTube for people to to see. I'll post it in Discord also. Uh, is this diagram available there too? Oh, this the, the issue with this diagram is that it uses like some weird software to play with it. And uh, yeah, like uh, today, my housemate took like two hours to get it to work. <laughs> so, uh, well, I can, I, we can, the description, it's easy to give, but the, the, this uh, software is like very, 
weird. Greatest PN editor. Uh, but I could share the, the diagrams, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I can't say I've heard of this before, but I, even like a PDF <laughs> export or something. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, that, that for sure. <laughs> That's easier. <laughs> uh, so I think the, the uh, yeah, we can share the, the subgraphs for sure like this, but it's, uh, we, we, uh, we want to eventually to make a some playable JavaScript thing out of this, but we have to do by hand. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, understood. It is really cool to see a walkthrough with this because I, I know that you publish some stuff on GitHub. I personally haven't really looked through it in, in full detail. Just I don't have those skills personally. I know other people in the community are excited and have looked at it. So it is cool to be able to sit down and have this walked through right in front of me. I think it's is a very good initial starting point to get to get some of the ideas in here. Yeah, sorry. I think the, the no, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. sorry. You go ahead. <laughs> uh, so I think it's uh, uh, so like the, the, it, this kind of diagram helps you bind together all the information because you have all these like uh, Bitcoin transactions, and it's a little hard to, to see what they are like, what are the requirements of them, and things like that. And here, like it becomes like oh, like becomes uh, you see the function and you see the. The, the function of uh, a transaction is like, oh, this transaction is making him leak uh, that key or it's making, it's forcing him to act quick before that path becomes available. And I think this is where this kind of uh, uh, diagrams, uh, they simple patterns, they bind everything together and it's much easier to go through it. And this is actually a formal diagram. It's not just a, a graph. Uh, so, I did have one question. Um, Ninety-nine point nine percent sure I know the answer, but I think it's I think it's helpful to ask anyway, just to clarify, um, especially for anyone else who maybe hasn't read your PDF yet. Um, this doesn't require any particular protocol changes to either on either the Bitcoin or the Monero side. Is that right? Yes, that's right. That's Which like. Is, uh... So I, I seem to remember seeing a couple of questions just in, in other media that basically, you know, seem to imply like, you know, oh, when when would a network upgrade enable this? Just to be clear, like there wouldn't need to be networks, network upgrades to enable this. I mean, in theory, people could be doing this right now, although it seems very unlikely without software support, right? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, for sure, like uh, we don't need anything uh, right now. Uh, even the the EC, ECDSA it, it has been done already. Like uh, we didn't, we were totally unaware of this work, but uh, it's uh, it looks like very high quality. So I think we can just use it. Uh, uh, so like uh, basically, we just use like a, a normal key in Monero, and in Bitcoin, it's scripts. Uh, there is fingerprinting, like. Uh, uh, from uh, the Bitcoin script, so people are going to be able to possibly tell that oh, this is this was probably an atomic swap, like this is this follows like that protocol there. So, uh, however, after Taproot uh, soft fork, I think it's BIP three four one, like uh, we could hide the, the this protocol in in the success cases if people all agree on it. So then it would be pretty interesting. Because then you wouldn't have any trace left on the Bitcoin blockchain about swap. Okay, sorry. Just to be clear, I, you may have said this, and maybe I, I just wasn't listening <laughs> closely enough. So, as far as a soft fork is concerned, are you saying that's a soft fork in Monero or Bitcoin to enable that? Where, in the best of cases, if it goes through and there are no contentious problems, that it would be much more difficult to mark the Bitcoin as related to a swap. Is sorry. So, the so soft fork is that related to Monero or Bitcoin? Bitcoin. Sorry, this is uh, Bitcoin. It's like the it's the Bip Schnorr, Bip Taproot, Tap Script. It's like uh, uh, so. It's if uh, when Bitcoin gets Schnorr, Bitcoin is gonna get uh, uh, Taproot as well. Uh, so it's that's what I'm talking about. So, but before you can look at it and say, oh, that could be an atomic swap. Uh, after that, then you can't say anything. So it's very interesting. Okay, very interesting. That'll help prevent uh, surveillance software from just marking it all as higher risk. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, 
Okay, this is the last question. Just putting it out there for those that are watching this on, on YouTube or, or anything. If you have any questions, now's a great chance to answer them. We have just a few minutes left. Um, although it doesn't seem like this research team is going anywhere. It looks like they're just getting started. <laughs> they have their work cut out for themselves. <laughs> but it is exciting to to hear about it. Um, yeah, really no questions coming in. Serang, did you have anything else that you wanted to get at? You may have, you may have walked away. Oh. No, 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 I'm here. No, I think this is, uh, I think this is extremely exciting. Um, I think, I think there's still, you know, questions to ask about, you know, especially which, you know, what was brought up about, you know, possible fingerprinting, I think is very important. You know, I think making sure that it's clearly understood what the privacy implications are about how the transactions are, you know, uh, initialized initially. And there have been some talk on um, the Monero Research Lab channel about this too. Uh, but, you know, I mean, this is great. You know, previously when it was first brought up, it was kind of this, you know, ah, if only we had, you know, proven systems that could show this particular equality. And we're like, yeah, wouldn't that be great? And now it turns out like this cool adapter signature and cross group stuff it's, it can be done. So I think it's very exciting. Yeah, I have to say when I first saw the pitch of like Monero Bitcoin atomic swaps, I just assumed it was someone trying to pitch like a centralized exchange that they were just calling a swap. <laughs> And then I had to do a little bit further to be like, oh, actually, these people are not kidding around. This is actually something that's that's not just. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like well, we started on, on uh, at CCC um, and we were just like, how do we make Bitcoin private? <laughs> <laughs> and I guess one last one last question that, that I have that uh, you know that is mentioned in in the paper. Yeah, I think it's actually mentioned pretty pretty clearly in the paper too, um, that this is not just limited to Monero or to Bitcoin. Um, in the paper, you, I know you and your colleagues talk about um, kind of pretty specifically what the requirements are for each of the different kind of types of chains and protocols. Is that right? Uh, yeah, like uh, basically like think about it, how much are we using of uh, Monero here? Like it's just a normal uh, address. Like, uh, yeah. so it's like, there's nothing special there. So anything that uh, uh, has as much capability as Monero can be one side of the Bitcoin trade. But so like, if you go, so Bitcoin is already very capable. So if you go to things that are more capable than that, than Bitcoin, then it's like, uh, it gets even easier. But of course, then you get more fingerprinting, like uh, even like, so you have like, like much deeper traces of what you, been doing left uh, uh, on chain so yeah like so for sure like uh, we uh, and I think the trick of the cross group equality that that makes like the bridge between any elliptic curve I think like uh, so then like you can just uh, uh, basically cross uh, across any any chain basically if you can if you can produce these proofs so mm -hmm. I think it's a uh, it's it's pretty it's, uh, like the protocol itself because we can play like the game theory only once on one side it shows it that it's possible to build stuff with very limited resources. I think protocols should be very minimal, and uh, and, uh, and like uh, we cannot use complicated primitives uh, or like, let's say complicated uh, systems to deal with uh, simple things like uh, like uh, accounting. Um, yeah, it sounds like on the Bitcoin side, at least, the, maybe the big limitation right now is just ECDSA. Is that right? Oh uh, yeah, that makes things like ugly and hard. Uh, like, uh, like, to, yeah, to do that, uh, the adapter signature on uh, on Schnorr would be trivial. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> for example. Yeah. Cool. Uh, thanks for the, the questions. Oh, thank you. I know we were uh, brought in here at the last minute to do something, but it was definitely worth it. It was, it was great to have you included at DEF CON. Um